And good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Train Kitchen here in Donington for a little bit of a Valentine's special. So I'm Simon. I'm Sian. Good morning. Hi. And we're going to take you through just to make a few little things to make the hearts quiver in the house. Because it's that time of the year. It right is. now, it's romance in the air. And apparently, we can't do romance without chocolate. That is, well, in my house, that is a given. Okay. So we're going to do two courses today. We're going to do a Parmesan crusted chicken breast as a main course. Mm. But first of all, we're going to get that really beautiful chocolate mousse underway. So this is that moment where you want to do something a little bit special. Let's face just it. Just it up a bit. You're just trying to share the love, which is always worthwhile. It doesn't have to only happen at this time of year. No. Let's face it. You should be thinking lovely thoughts throughout yeah. the year. Right. Come on. Let's crack on. Gorgeous. What okay, have you got? So we've got about 75 grams of any sort of chocolate. Okay. We're using dark chocolate today. Okay. We've got a tablespoon of just gold. This is golden caster sugar, but to be honest, any sugar, Any sugar would do. do. Okay. We've got three eggs, which we're actually going to separate. So right. we're going to split the white and the yolk apart from each other. Okay. And that's it. Brilliant. You're going to use the whole egg in this recipe? I'm going to use the white in this recipe right. for the mousse. Okay. And we're going to use the yolks later on okay. when we crust up our chicken. Excellent. So you're not wasting any of that egg? <laughs> no, not at all. Brilliant. So, okay. If I just take those out of that one. Brilliant. We'll move our grater out of the way for decorating later. Yeah. And oh. in that little one, yep. can I ask you just to break up that chocolate for Absolutely. me? Absolutely. That would what be a job. awesome. Sure thing. And we're going to break up the chocolate and we're going to microwave it. Okay. okay yeah. So we're going to microwave the chocolate in about 20, 30 second bursts. Right. Giving it a good stir all the time. Okay. Do. So that we don't take it too far. Okay, fine. And we're going to save a couple of chunks. Okay. To grate over the top at the end. Love. Just to oh, give that it that lovely nice. little finish. Yeah, it's all about presentation. There you go. Right, so, so two so will be enough yeah, for that? I'll put keep, those there. Keep us cut the chunks. Okay, do. So if you want to zip zap that in the microwave, 20, 30 seconds, give it a good stir. 20, 30 seconds, give it a good stir. Okay. There's going to be lots of pinging going on in the background. There is going to be lots of pinging rolls. going on in the background. All right. And I'm going to try and separate ready. these eggs. Now, this is where it could all go horribly wrong. Okay. Even the best chefs occasionally get messy at this point. So, we only want the white. We don't want the yolk. Sure. That's not actually Ooh, doing... Hold on. And then... On again. So... Yep. Crack our egg. Hold it upright so that your yolk goes in the bottom. Lovely. And then all that we're going to do is just ah. tip the yolk from one side to the other side. Okay, this is quite delicate. So that all of the white drips into the bowl. Okay, and you're saving the And then the my yolk, I'm going to put on my plate here because I need that for later. Okay, then. All right. Brilliant. Okay, so, yolk. Okay, yolk. Yeah. <laughs> Check you yeah. out. My it's goodness. That time you're of on fire on this Friday jokes. morning. Oh, cracking. Yeah, yeah cracking. Oh, my Thank gosh. You. But I just wanted to ask, if you found this a little bit of an intimidating moment yeah. um, and you weren't sure about that, a simpler way of separating your eggs? You can, can do it through your hand. Do it in your yeah. hand, pour it in. Okay. Some this... people, if they've been into cooking in the past, would have been bought one of those egg separators because it's something that people buy people for so Christmas. So that really is you a want thing. One. Uh, yeah, it is a thing. Yeah. And literally, it's like this little bowl at the bottom with a gap around the top and you crack your egg into it the white goes through the gap at the top the yolk stays at the bottom okay okay this is happening really quickly just going to show days. you need to be really careful keeping an eye on the chocolate the whole time yeah definitely lovely and that's why we do it in that 20 to 30 second burst we don't want to burn the chocolate okay no so as you can see sian's got it going bring it in so we can see oh, sorry in here. absolutely there um, you go, so there's a few lumps still in there Probably 30 seconds more, those lumps will start to melt, and then that's going to be cracking. Lovely. With a yeah. Cracking, you see, I'm we're, trying. We're now. all at it. Right, Go it. last one. So, uh, Simon, with the chocolate, yep. we're all about not spending too much money. We've said this is a special moment in the year, yep. but every day is a special moment and can be. Um, and every day should have a chocolate mousse in it. In well, there opinion. we go. <laughs> and it's a really good opportunity to do that sort of shop your larder, check what you've got. Any chocolates you've got left over from Christmas. Right. Moving on through the year. If, if you're in a household with kids where they all get bought far too many Easter eggs from 
Barista, yeah. melt, the, melt the eggs down, make a mousse out of it. The kids will love it. And I certainly have found that if there's chocolate that you buy that sometimes has an unusual ingredient, maybe a biscuit or a yep. flavour, and you think, actually, I don't really like that, it ends up sitting in the cupboard for yonks. Perfect. But the truth of it is this is a good opportunity to gather all your bits yep. and bobs. So and I'm going to put my eggs to one side. We'll loosen those off with a little bit of water later, the yolks. And I'm left with a bowl just with egg white in it. So what we're going to do, we're going to use an electric whisk. You can do it by hand if you want to. It'll just take you a little bit longer. And we're just going to whisk our egg, yet, our egg white. Sorry about the noise. There's a lot of noise in today's session. Right, I think that's pretty good. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get as much air into the egg white as we can. We're trying to get stiff peaks coming out of it, which it will do in a minute. Let's get the air in first. We're then going to go in with our sugar. We're going to re-whisk it. But we want it stiffer than that. As I say, apologies for the noise. Okay, so as you can see, our egg whites are coming together. They're getting all thick. The air is getting into them and it blows the egg white up. This is what's going to make your chocolate mousse really light, really fluffy, is the okay. egg white. So I'm just going to go a little bit longer because I want it a little bit stiffer than that. Okay, so that's stiff enough for the first go. Okay. The reason that we're doing this second, we want the chocolate just to cool down that little bit mm -hmm. so it doesn't cook our egg white when we put it in there. Okay, we don't want it to cool down so much so that it goes solid. Okay. Because what we want it to do is combine and cool together. But we don't want to go in too hot because if we're going too hot, we're cooking. And as hot. long as you don't overheat your chocolate, actually, you can let it down again if it yep. if it firms up and goes too solid. No just keep it very gradual, yep. ten or twenty seconds, seconds at a time. Yeah. So our sugar, one tablespoon, is going straight in with our egg white. Okay. Doke. Now this is going to allow us to get this to really stiff peaks. Okay. So what we want it to do is literally spike up at the top because afterwards we're going to go in with that chocolate just thinking on those recipe swaps any type of sugar any type of sugar pasta granulated any okay. sugar yep. yeah so bring that together until you get some stiff peaks that stay for about 30 seconds really So if I just do that and just gently lift it, what I'm looking for is that to stay like that for about 30 seconds. Okay, so right. soft peak. So it's in a peak because then we're going to go in with that, we're going to whisk it again, bring mm -hmm. it all together, and then we're going to spoon it into some nice little wine glasses to give it that little special touch. Normally, any bowl will do. Yeah. Little ramekins, anything you've got all works. Perfect. We're just making it that little bit special. And it's having those little thoughts that make a special moment. It doesn't Indeed. have to be a whole big deal. How Brilliant. hot or cold is so I think it's sort of warm. Yeah, that's it. We'll be all right. Lovely. So we're just going to go in with all of the chocolate. Some people would say fold in it little by little, but then your chocolate just sets really quick because the eggs are cold. Okay. So we're going to go in with all of it. Yeah. And then we're going to re-whisk it so that, that chocolate goes all the way through. We get as much air as we possibly can in there. Lovely. That's spatula. Yeah, that sounds like a good bet. There we go. So then we just get all that lovely chocolate out. We want as much of it as we can. Don't want to waste any. Absolutely no. not. I'm always told chocolate's the way to people's hearts. So. That's true. So there's that. Lovely. Back in with our whisk. Yeah, easy. Again, bring it back to be quite firm. Mm -hmm. You'll see it's quite velvety, it's smooth, silky, whatever else you want to call it. And you'll feel it thicken. All right, it's like double cream, it thickens up okay. quite quickly. And then Lovely. we're ready 
Move the whisk out of the way. What's surprising is it actually looks like quite a, a large quantity, doesn't it? It's, it's, it, it makes quite a lot from yeah. three, three little egg yolks and, and 75 and grams of chocolate. A small yeah. bar of chocolate. Okay, if you want to add flavour, if you've got... I mean, I'm a, Ooh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a I'm a chocolate orange man. Oh, yeah. uh, I love it's, a chocolate orange. Yeah, fair if enough. If you've got too. orange essence in the in the cupboard, or you've got peppermint essence, or anything like peppermint. that, peppermint. Few drips in there now it brings that little bit of flavour to yeah, it. Yeah, cinnamon would be nice in yeah. there. Something a bit more warm and spicy warm flavors. And small, warm, spicy. Yeah. Cold oh, evening okay. in February. Gorgeous. Right, so I'm just gonna dollop, for want of a better word. Lovely, it's a good word. Spoon, dollop, whatever my mousse in here nice now if you want it to keep it nice and clean you'd use two spoons ah. um yeah you have got another i have got another one because then you can just take it into the middle and slide it off and i line. have to say that is a very quick easy doable posh pud if you want to make it if you want to make it a bit special that is a really lovely way of of doing something with a little bit more Finesse okay. looks great. Yeah, I can imagine if where you this is heading. Could just grab me a little piece of kitchen roll or something. And just I go can around definitely the top do that. Yeah, I can do because that. Because then clean we can that clean edge that off. edge off. Because we're trying to impress tonight. This, you know. So if you were planning your evening, uh, you had other uh, activities in mind, things you're going to do through the evening. What you could do is make this the day before. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you can make it during the day, the day before. So if you are going to do that. The ultimate Valentine's night of, you know, let's watch a movie, let's have something nice, nice. to eat. And let's... you've done all the cooking ahead. You can prep all of this meal beforehand. Perfect. That these okay these are time. just going to sit in the fridge and they're going to okay. firm up so that we can actually top them off. Brilliant. Try and make them both the same size. I don't want anybody arguing on Valentine's night that somebody's got more chocolate than somebody else. But those are, and I bet they're quite rich and creamy. So, you know, that's quite a substantial they're, chocolate they're, pudding. They're gooey, they're yummy, they're yeah. just something extra. Looks gorgeous. And of course, as you're making it, if there is any left in the bowl, you get the special treat because you get to as my nan always used to let me do, <laughs> stick my fingers in That's the bowl at the nice. end of it. That is lovely. So. Okay, gorgeous. I think we're close to being fair. Nobody's falling out. Get all of that off there. And then they, we took, we just clean the tops up. I'll do that and one. Then into the fridge with those for us, Sian, if you don't lovely. mind. I'm just going to clear these and wash my hands off because I've got egg on them. So those look absolutely gorgeous. The bonus of a hot sink right next to and us. And I'll put those right in the fridge. And then we're going to get on and we're going to go with chicken. Wow. So okay. into the fridge go our mousses. We keep our two little bars of chocolate, our two little squares of chocolate. For something special later. This is This is where, if you, haven't, if, you, if you wanted to make it really chocolate, put all the dark chocolate in there. Find a bar of white chocolate to put it over the top for colour Excellent. contrast. Excellent. Okay, anyway, nice. We'll get rid of that for a minute. We'll come back to that later on. Okay. And we're going to bring in our other board. So we're going to do crushed new potatoes, mm. pan fried veg, and then our herb crusted um, herb crusted chicken. Lovely. Or parmesan crusted chicken, rather. We're going to get everything prepped before we do the chicken. Okay. Reason for doing that. The chicken we want to do last because we don't want to put anything else onto a board that's had raw chicken in it. Okay, understood. So, we're going to go with our veg first. Lovely. Grab a board back in. So, in a pan with some water, if you don't mind. Sarah. Well organised, absolutely. Cold water going in Cold there. water going out. We're just going to grab our potatoes. Because we're going to crush these potatoes, we're just going to literally chop them in half. I'll come into the middle of the board while Sian's not here so everybody can see. Mm -hmm. Chop them in half, long ways. And then we're just going to chunk them up. Now, this will make them cook quicker. It also allows us to crush them with a fork a lot easier. So, cut long ways. Cut across. Now, you can do any sort of potato you want with this dish. Okay. If you want to do chips, you can do chips. If you want to do Hasselbacks, you can do Hasselbacks. You, you just... And check out, um, check out online mm -hmm. on our website. We show you how to do lots of different things with potatoes, and there's more things being added every month. And the reason for that is because potatoes are one of the most wasted foods. So yeah. any ideas that help us 
come up with new recipes, new ideas about how to use up those potatoes, stop us throwing the, them away. Uh, we're absolutely helping we, we did one on waste. We did one on potatoes back on it. Something like 2.9 million whole potatoes a day. Every day. In absolutely. the UK that we waste. That we uh, throw yeah. in the bin. Yeah. It's a potato. Guys, yeah. what are we throwing them away There for? are many reasons why that happens, but yeah, unfortunately, the potato is one of the most wasted. Okay, so I think that that will probably do us because we're only serving two. Lovely. Which is a bit different for us today to be doing a thing where we're making two. Well, Because normally we go, everything feeds the family for. We've been working on family food a lot. Okay, okay, so if you just want to put that one on, yeah, that can come up to the boil. Lovely. And then all I'm going to do, I'm just going to prep. Thank you. Prep my veg up so that we can... We're just going to toss that pan fry our veg right at the very last minute. Off. Right at the very last minute. We're just going to pan fry it. Keep it crunchy. But we're going to do a few different things with our veg. So, our ten stem broccoli. Actually, I might just blanch that as I've got boiling water. Mm -hmm. That'll keep that nice. So, when we say blanch, literally get a pan of boiling water, drop it in there, two, three minutes, keep it crunchy. Excellent. So, I think that that... It's going to be lovely. dropped in the water and later. And we might do the same with our little bit of collie. Now they're unusual, aren't they? Lovely so these, little cauliflower sprouts. These, yeah, cauliflower shoots. Shoots. Um, I don't know what to say about them. They're beautiful. I love they them. They are beautiful. Um, and you can literally just slice them there. Keep the base for stock or keep the base for making soups or thickening. Mm -hmm. And then the top bit, you just get this lovely little florette with a little bit of stalk. Really helps build fibre nice. into your diet, which Absolutely. Is every, something everybody needs. Yeah. And they just look really pretty. They do. Um, really So are. that's what we're going to do with those. Need my peeler. I know we say, Sam, ditch yeah. the peeler. Yeah, sneaking in a peeler. What is it? A special I'm, occasion, I'm, Simon. I'm sneaking in a peeler, especially oh, for Valentine's. Okay. And what we're going to do, because we want to pan fry this off, we're going to take our carrots, which have been lovely and washed, and we're just going to... Ribbon. Oh, you're not actually peeling. Okay. I'm not actually oh, peeling. I I'm using it instead of a knife because oh, that's fantastic. Some people might be able to cut things that thin. I oh. can't. So those are like ribbons. You're making. So we're just ribboning up the carrots. Nice. We're going to toss that into a, a wok or a frying pan later on. And that's going to cook really quickly, really presumably, quick. because they're so thin. Really quick. And nice. this is where what you want to look for now. If you're going to do ribbon veg. Let's make it a rainbow. Let's make as many colours as we can get. Well, we know then that we're eating loads of nutrients, so the more bright and colourful the plate of food that you're eating is, the, the more, more nutrition you get. Absolutely. So, that's a carrot ribboned up. Lovely. Gorgeous. We're going to do a parsnip as well. Lovely. Let's go like with a parsnip. Very nice. These have been well scrubbed. Whoever's in the back of Got house area, nice this, this kitchen this morning has like scrubbed these within, yeah. within an inch of their lives. Lovely. Now, with the skins, I've got one over there with skin on it. Mm -hmm. We're going to use the skins as well. Lovely. Again, trying to reduce those, the you don't amount want to throw of food it away. waste going in your general bin. And all of this really... is edible. Yeah, absolutely. They look very clean, really yummy. Actually, a lot of the fibre is in the skin, obviously, and those extra nutrients yep. that sit just beneath the skin. Um, if you're throwing away the skin of your vegetables, you're really chucking the best bit in the bin. And what you do, once we've gone all the way through, you'll be left with a very, very mead, very, very sad looking parsnip Skinny or carrot. Parsnip. Um, but this is where you just chuck them, chop them all up, chuck them in a pan with some veg stock, any bits of veg, chop it all up, the carrot, the parsnip, the broccoli, stalks, the mm -hmm. stalks off of the um, collie shoots, anything like that. Chuck it in with some veg stock, whack it on the bubble, bring it to the boil, let it really cook well. Quick zap or a mash up, you've got soup. Lovely. You're away to go. Perfect. You're off. Um, and that's what it's all about. It's all about bringing these flavours together. Definitely. Not wasting it, not doing things no, that are going to throw that it in the bin. It's... We look at quite a lot with skin and uh, peelings, outer edges, etc. You know, you can put a tub in your freezer, just the place where you accumulate all of those stock yep. pot bits and bobs. Yep. Um, and really let that build up until a container is full. If you have that space in your freezer, you could do it in a bag so you can squash it in. And then, as you say, when you've got a, a real supply, put water stick it on, boil it down, really cooking all that nutrient into a stock that you can yep. use however and Now, whenever. we said about colour. Mm. So we've got our orange, we've got our white. I know we've got our green and white down here. Yes. We found a little bit of asparagus, Lovely. which is always a little bit special. Totally. I'm just going to chuck them in like that. 
brilliant. Okay, might chop them in half, but I might just chop them in like that. They look gorgeous. You don't have to over prep veg. No. Veg has got its flavor for a reason. Each veg tastes different. Don't mess around with it that much. No. You don't need to. And when you're even doing a sort of special supper, something like this, mm -hmm. you know, it's always still worth checking that, that reduced section in the supermarket, oh, that yellow sticker always. area, because a vegetable like an asparagus that doesn't have a really long shelf life can often be found in there. And if you're doing a supper like this, use it that day, head for that yellow sticker section and buy up those bits of veg, which otherwise are going to Get rid of that sticker stigma. Yeah. Right. Totally. So we're going to finish off just by prepping up like we said, we wanted to get all of our veg prepped before yeah. we bring our chicken in. Brilliant. So all of the ends we're going to keep. Super. Because soup. Yeah. You're one for oh, puns so today. Fair. You're just you nailing see, everything. Are you me today, Simon? So, you can't help it. Soup. I'm going to bring you that pot pot in for the moment. Okay. Lovely. Soup. Thank you for that pot. No worries. And the same with these. Okay, so we're just going to tidy these up. If you bring... The heads to one end. Mm -hmm. You want to little, level them little, all up. Little tip. Bring the heads to one end and then slice. Everybody's got the same amount of stock. Lovely. All right. And all soup. of those full of goodness going in the stock pot. Love it. Those bits in the soup. And let's just chop these in half. I'm not going to put much of this in the soup pot. Okay. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take the little ends off because they've dried out. They can go in the soup pot. Okie doke. So they can go in the soup pot, all over the cooker or wherever else they <laughs> might a end up. Sneaky part then that can traps them in there. Yeah, always good the uh, the extractor. So they can go in the soup. Brilliant. And these, I'm just going to chop in half so that they cook off quite quickly, mm -hmm. but also so that we can make them into a nice little shape if we want to. Lovely. Okay. So it's all about presentation when you're trying to do it something will be. a little bit special. It will be. And we're just going to keep all of that lot. So that lot. Our ribbons and our asparagus, they're going to get pan fried. Lovely. And we're going to go with our collie shoots and our broccoli that we're just Drop going to blanch through. Should I turn that one down a yeah, little bit? Yeah, turn that now. one down. So our potatoes have come to the boil. We're just going to turn those down, let them simmer for sort of 15 minutes. Whilst we get everything else sorted out, Okey including doke. our chicken. So well done, you. Veg prep done. Now. Veg prep done. Yeah. Okay. So chicken. They're bringing a lovely red chopping board. Okay. Hopefully so everybody can see what we're doing. And what we're going to do, we're actually going to put some plastic wrap on our chopping board. Okay, nice chefy. Good You'll technique. Right. Actually, I don't want to do that yet, do I? I've got to slice the chicken. Aha. Uh -huh. Brilliant. Slice your chicken, so it always <laughs> makes it easier if you've sliced it first. Fair enough. So, two chicken breasts that we've had in the fridge. And a sharp knife. So from a contamination point of view, if you're working with raw meat, you use a specific chopping board for that. And when I'd you've always done use that, a different chopping board. Swap out that chopping board. Everything goes, hands get washed, we start again. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. So what we're going to do, we're going to butterfly this chicken. Or we're mm. going to try to. So just on one edge, just go slice through. Lovely. Might need my other knife. We don't want to go all the way through the chicken. Okay, okay? so making a little opening without cutting through it and uh, out on. I don't the want to go board. in top to tail. Uh -huh. So top to tail. I don't want to go all the way through that side. Okay. Because Ooh. what I'm trying to do, he says, trying. Looks good. Opening it out. Is I'm trying to open it out so it makes a little heart shape. And this technique is butterfly. This is butterfly. Okay. Yeah. So really basically, nice. what's meant to happen is you're meant to go do it, you fold it out, and it looks like a butterfly. Uh -huh. But when we come with this, if or, we do turn it upside down. Yeah. If we do this, we can make it into a little heart. You can. That's cute. Okay. Very so, lovely. We're going to do that with that one. We're going to do the same with the next one. Mm-hmm. So if you didn't have bre breast of chicken as yep. a particular cut, I know it might not end up looking like a heart, but you could certainly fillet your chicken. You could use smaller other cuts yep. and still coat them and breadcrumb them or cheesy coat them. Yeah, in the at, at the end of the day, it's about the flavor. Right. Okay, we're going with a whole chicken breast only purely and simply because 
when you do and butterfly it out, you can make it look like a heart. Yeah, lovely. Um, if you want to do it with uh, mini fillets, absolutely fine. With these, it's interesting. If you happen to cut all the way through, I'm just getting rid of the sinewy bits. Mm -hmm. awesome. If you happen to cut all the way through, don't panic. It's not going to matter mm -hmm. because what you can do if you cut all the way through, you just put them like that. Lay them still look like a heart. Which actually you could do if you had other smaller fillets or yep. goujons or other yep, bits. Definitely. Like Works just as well. Brilliant. So what we're going to do, we want it to cook relatively quickly because okay. we, we don't want it in a pan for long because okay. otherwise our breadcrumbs are going to burn and our meat's not going to be cooked. Okay. Which is why I had uh -huh. my cleaning film. A plan. So just lift those two up. Line my cling film down. Brilliant. Whoopa. Okay, got so, it. Somebody back a house falling over one of the bar stools <laughs> around the table. Just going to put my chicken on there. And then try not to touch anything because my hands have been on the chicken. In fact, right. Can I you help might you? be better to do that. Shall I take that for you? And then we just want to roll it up and over the top. Mm -hmm. There we go. Let's see where you're heading with that. I can take that off with you in my yeah. finger. And then, in comes a rolling pin, the big bad bushing <laughs> stick, all right? Okay. Now, this is not for anger management, although, okay? although it can work. Mm -hmm. This is purely and simply just to flatten that meat out, tenderize okay. it a little bit, make it thin, make it flat, make it cook quick. Okay. So. A controlled tapping, yeah. Okay, yeah, my anger's, in, my anger's in total. You're in, you're in control. I'm in, I'm in a good place today. You certainly so. are. So, yeah, we're just going to bash that out just so that we flatten it down. Excellent. I can see that it's going to be quite malleable. Yep. And if you wanted to accentuate the heart, you could do that when you're cooking. Yeah, or now At if you want time. to, you yeah. can sort of nudge it in with your fingers. Ease them in. Yeah, so lovely. That That's so cute. You then bash around and you just bring it back in. There's your heart. Brilliant. Happy days. Right. Move that to one side. Mm -hmm. I'm going to quickly wash my hands again. Yep. If you can grab that, let's I'll see. I'll bring that in. Amazing. Let's move that one a little bit over. Okay. And this looks like all the ingredients for the bread crumbing. It is. Hopefully, Parmesan everything that we need. Breadcrumb. So we should have I some flour, see. some breadcrumbs, some parmesan. Yep. Uh, a little bit of garlic granule. I can see that there too. Some mixed herbs. Yes. And... Ah, coming back into play. Back into play. Nice. Come on, egg yolks. If you could yes. just, with a fork, Got smack one. them apart and then maybe just a little drizzle of water just to thin it out. Just to a loosen little bit, them up. Just to loosen okay. it up. Okay, lovely. That would be awesome. I'll do Move that. the salt and pepper. We'll need that in a second. Now, plates for this. Crumbing chicken isn't that difficult but you need to just take it steady, take it gently. So, flour onto one plate. Got that egg there for you, Simon. That looking okay? It's looking great. Brilliant. It's looking fab. Okay. So we've got flour. Now, yes. you can add it all with the flour because you might as well. The breadcrumbs and the parmesan that we're going to mix together, uh -huh. I wouldn't add it all in to start off with. Okay. okay? I'm going to put my garlic in here. Okay. So flavouring going in the flour. Yeah. Lovely. Where you put it doesn't particularly matter. Okay. Okay, so you can put half in there. We could put half in there. Okay, so it's all going to cook through anyway. Yeah. Lovely. And the mixed herbs, we'll put that in there. Very nice. The recipe will give you a greater understanding of where to put everything, but, but also, in honesty, it doesn't matter. Yeah, again, UK Harvest, as you guys hopefully know, we work with very flexible approach to recipes that are really well tested. So you can swap in. There are always tips available with the recipes to encourage you to be confident, to try different versions of the recipes based on what you have, what you've already got, reducing your need to go shopping to buy extra things okay, um, so, so yeah so that's like a flavored flour, stage of the coating yeah herbs, lovely. little bit of garlic powder brilliant in that one like so, it should i take that yeah, to the side for you that'd be brilliant breadcrumbs 
if you've got old bread, it works brilliantly. Just rip it apart, okay. blitz it up, whichever way around. Or you can buy them. It's entirely up to you. So another one of the top wasted foods is bread. We love to incorporate bread wherever we can into our recipes. And bread crumbing, it can be done just with the fingers. It can be done with a stick blender. You can grate it. Onto you can it. Yeah, grate you it. Can. You can do anything to get bread crumbs. And anything that you can use that, again, is stopping you throwing the crusts or the bread as it's coming to the end of its life. Put it in the freezer, freeze it, get it out when you want to make your breadcrumbs, and again, grate it, crumble it, however you like. Now, you might notice I haven't put all of my breadcrumbs and all of my parmesan okay. and everything straight onto this plate. Okay. Reason for that, I'm going to be putting raw chicken on the top of it. Okay. If I don't need all of the breadcrumbs, once I put raw chicken on it, I've got to chop them. Fair. At this precise moment in time, all of this lot, we could put together, we could put it in an airtight container, we could stick it in the freezer, we could stick it in the fridge, we could put it in the and cupboard. And you've got it there to use. And we're not throwing whenever. it away. So. Brilliant. We just happened to be the wrong way around then. That's okay. Should we swap? No, we don't. No, no. Just, okay. just oh, in order of plates. That's got all. it. Got it. So, what are we going to do? We're going to egg our chicken. Yes. Are we? No, we're not. We're going to flour our chicken. Flour. <laughs> flour, egg, bread It's crumbs. the romance. It's going to your head, sign. <laughs> I, thought, I thought I was doing well for a Friday, but now You've I'm just beginning it. to get a little concerned. You've got it. Flour, egg, breadcrumb, okay. onto a tray at the end. We're ready to cook. Brilliant. So, if I give you the tray. Yeah, I can be on the end. Fantastic. And I'm going to get our chicken. Now, you want to dredge every bit of your chicken. Now, what do I mean by dredge? Mm -hmm. I mean, you want to get all of it covered. Coated. Okay. Okay, so the, bread, the flour is now sealing the... Outer edge of the of the chicken. Yeah, bringing some flavour though from the herbs bringing and the in garlic. Bringing that garlic and put. herby flavour, yeah. lovely. So that's one of our chicken ready now to be egged. Looks gorgeous. This is where it all gets messy, folks. Fair okay? enough. So egg both sides. Got it. Make sure that all of your chicken has got egg on it. Okay. Why this do is, we want it to yeah. all have egg on it? Go on. Because that's what's going to stick your breadcrumbs to your Acting chicken. like glue. It's your glue for your breadcrumbs. Brilliant. Love it. And this is where Simon's fingers get really mucky. Yeah. I can always top up any of those bowls if you need them. They're all right at the minute, Brilliant. Dennis. Yeah. And then into our breadcrumb. Okay. And we just want to make sure that it totally covers all of our chicken. Lovely. Okay? That looks amazing. Because when we cook this, these breadcrumbs are going to go all crispy, crunchy. Yeah. And yummy, yummy scrummy. Sounds great. And the parmesan will crisp and melt with it, bring extra flavour. Lovely. Again, another reason why you don't want it to be in the pan too long because no. the, the breadcrumbs obviously take no time. You just time don't at want all. it to burn, you don't want anything like that. But that's that a lovely thin breast there that's been really, really well flattened out. Looks absolutely gorgeous. And just press your breast, press your chicken breast into your breadcrumbs, okay? It really does help if you it's stick it. It's got a it. thick, nice coating. Okay. And there's that one. Right. If you could, because your hands don't, I can. don't look quite no, like mine. that's fine. We're topping up here. That one, please. Yep. Yeah. Lovely. And then we'll get the second one in. Break Our prime. potatoes are just bubbling. It doesn't matter how soft they get. We don't want them to totally fall apart because we want them to have some form of crunch or shape because we're going to crush them, not mash them. Okay. So, Simon, if your loved one happens to be somebody who really likes their food with a kick of chilli, or Add it in. Cajun flavors, Add it in. Mexican. Yeah. You could really just spice up your breadcrumb to spice really breadcrumb up, spice bring the in flour that flavor. Up. Yeah. Any of these stages, yeah. yeah, lovely. If somebody is that, oh, I really like it with a kick, and you don't like it with a kick, oh, this is ideal. Excellent. This of is course. ideal. One for you, one for them. Because you add it as you go. Lovely. Um, you know, there's nothing to stop you if you don't like all the kick of the spice and the chili or the paprika or the heat. Do yours, and then at this stage where I've got it in the in the egg at the moment, great the last man. one that we're doing, sprinkle, 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 or great, great, great. Add in that extra flavour. Add in that flavour. Okay. That um, looks really good. Make that loved one feel extra special because you've actually thought about them, but you're not making yourself bad because you're having what you want to. And I have to say, this is quite good fun working together like this. Yep. You, you don't have to prepare your whole meal and separately. This could be a joint effort. Yeah, this exactly. could be a fabulous love family it meal. It could be a whole family it event, could, to be honest. Absolutely. The, uh, having worked with my daughter, 
Yeah. She loves this bit. I bet. This is fun. Absolutely. Getting completely Messy. covered in food, <laughs> having bits sticking to your fingers Fair and enough. everything else. She absolutely loves it. But yeah, let's bring all those breadcrumbs in. Again, just push that chicken breast down into the breadcrumb so it coats nicely. Looks great. Um, now, we're going to pan fry these. You can oven cook them. Okay. You can air fry them. Yeah. Anything that's going to crisp it up. Okay. Just make sure your chicken is cooked. So we'll look at okay. that when you're doing the actual so cooking. So when you get to it, we might just make a little nick in the middle of it, open it up, make sure there's no pinkness in the middle. Sure thing. Um, but yeah, there they we look are. They amazing. Lovely. So Brilliant. They are ready to go. Okay. I'm going to get rid of these bowls. I'm happy. Yeah, go for it. So Sorry. I'll move that one. I'll move those out of the way for you. And I'll take everything to do with chicken out of the way. I'm gonna leave and again, I'm going to go and wash my hands for Brilliant. about the fifth time today. Okay, you so go that way. At this stage, now that they're breadcrumbed up, if you wanted to, you could freeze them in that state. You can fridge them in that state. You could do anything. They again, with your leftover breadcrumbs. Like we said earlier, they can go in a pot, they can go in a bag, they can go in the freezer, they can go in an airtight container in the cupboard, just in case you've managed to get rid of the little ones for the night. Yeah, okay. Because it is Valentine's Day. So that is a really good tip. If you wanted to, you could prepare the whole meal to this stage, put them in the fridge, actually store them, keep yep. them, and use them at a later date. Uh, and the breadcrumbs. when you're ready. Keep the breadcrumbs. Get the kids back from wherever they've been for the night to give you a little bit of space. And they can do exactly what we've just done. Lovely. And if you use cubes of chicken or chunks of chicken, it's basically a chicken nugget. Perfect. Really good. Kids love it. Right. I'm going to give this a quick wipe down. Yeah. Lovely. If I can I'm ask you just to... You. Let's just get the worst of that. A little bit of boiling water in there would be perfect. Lovely. So we're going to put a pan on with some boiling water in it. That's just to get our veg that we're going to blanch going. We're going to get a little frying pan and a little bit of oil ready just to pan fry off our veg. And then we're going to get our chicken on the go. There now, go. all of this can be done whenever you want. I reckon they're probably ready. They are ready. So basically, our, our potato should go onto a fork and then fall off. Perfectly. Like that. So they're ready to go. They're not falling apart. So if we could get those drains, yeah, that'd Absolutely. be amazing. There's colander just here for you. Lovely. Got it all. Well Lovely. Done. Thank you. And then we're going to put that pan on to boil. Don't forget, guys, you've, you've not only got this chicken dish that we're doing, our chocolate, Chocolate is in the oh, oven. Yeah. Is it oh, in the yeah. Oven? No, it's not. It's in the fridge. In the fridge. It's in the fridge, not in the oven. Chilling beautifully. So, back in with our veg. That can just sit on a side, keeping warm somewhere. Lovely. Our water's boiling. We're blanching off these two. Now, we're going to blanch off our collie stalks first. Okay. Why? They're denser. Okay. They're going to take longer to cook. Fine. So, we're going to literally give them a minute. Lovely. In there, the steam will cook them as well as everything else. Fantastic. Once they've had a minute, Sian, if you can go in with them, that'd yep. be awesome sauce. Absolutely, can do. I'm going to put a drizzle of oil into this frying pan. So about between one and two tablespoons of oil is going in there. You on here, Sian? Good drizzle, yes, please. We're going to go warm. <laughs> So my oven, my oven, my hob goes up to nine. I'm going to go about seven. Okay. All right, I don't want it burning hot. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in with my asparagus to start off with. Okay. That's going to get 30 to 40 seconds. Then I'm going to go in with the other veg. Just bring it all together. Then it can sit to one side. Okay. It will continue to cook. Right, lovely. Okay. So you might be thinking, yeah, but the chicken's going to take eight minutes. Everything's getting cold. The veg will continue to cook. The veg in there will continue to cook. Okay, fine. So we're just going to get it to that stage where it's crunchy. Lovely. We're going to pull it away. Not overdone. We're going to cook our chicken, which is going to take eight to ten minutes. So by the time we come back to it, A, it's still going to be hot, Perfect. and B, it's going to be softened. Sounds so great. So we can eat. All right? Lovely. So you might your... need a little flicker. Yeah, I'm going to put your broccoli in. So Thank you. Just get all of that going. Okay. You might notice we haven't got that much water in that pan. That's not a problem. Lovely. Don't know which lid fits, but we'll find a lid that fits. Not that one. 
we're just going to put the lid on the top. Keep that steam in there. Steam it through. Love it. In the meantime, this has got hot. Our oil. On we go with our asparagus. Again, we're going asparagus first because it's going to take longer to cook. You'll hear just a little sizzle. You mm -hmm. won't hear a big spit, spit, spit. Lovely. Try and get all of your asparagus covered in oil because then it will cook evenly. Shake it around. It won't take long to soften. All right. Brilliant. I know we're only over a heat of seven, medium high heat, uh, high medium heat, but it won't take long to start to soften. We don't want it to fall apart. That's why we're not boiling. Mm -hmm. If you boil it, it gets really wet really quickly, falls apart, goes all soggy. Mm. No crunch. Again, you've overcooked a lot of the nutritional content. You know, yeah. you're better off to lightly cook a vegetable and so I mean, that it has everybody, a Everybody at home, you crunch. know how the loved one in your life likes their veg. We always like to cook things a little bit under so they're a little bit crunchy. Absolutely. As we said before, veg has got its own nat natural flavour. It will keep it going. It keeps the nutrients. It keeps all that goodness in there. Okay, I'm just turning that one down under those veg. Yeah, I bet they're perfect. pretty good. But they can just sit in there. We'll strain those off right at the end when we're ready to serve. Lovely. Okay, so we've given those that sort of 30 seconds to a minute on their own. Start off with over that medium heat. They hate. already look lovely. Smells great. That's that and then we go a ribbon. The one time that we will allow you to use a peeler in your kitchen. Yeah, is when you're making it look pretty. Is when we're trying to Absolutely. make it look pretty. Absolutely, yeah. Just give that a little toss around in there. Gorgeous. If you've got the the, the joy of two Double slices, spatulas. Yep. <laughs> Love just it. mix it through. And then that's just going to sit on there for a couple of minutes. Okay. And we're going to get the other pan in ready to rock and roll with our chicken. So right, move that one onto if there. If all of that goes that way, I'm going to actually move that pan this way so I can work here. Okay. Uh, on the chicken. So that one can go on there. I can keep an eye on those. Thank you so very much. No problem. And in we come. Different frying pan. Hopefully everybody can see. Oil again. Medium heat. This is where your other tablespoons of oil come in if you've been reading the recipe. And again, doesn't matter what oil you have, just greasing that pan. So Not it could be all. vegetable, sunflower, yeah. yeah. Rape I mean, a seeds. couple of tablespoons over medium heat, get it warm. Then we're going to go in with the chicken. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to cook the chicken for about four or five minutes on either side. Lovely. We're going to keep looking at that breadcrumb because what we don't want is brown breadcrumb. We want golden. We don't want black. Okay. <laughs> black breadcrumbs, nobody likes it. means you burn it. Two toasters. So medium heat. Fine. Get it to a stage where your oil does what we call runs around the pan. Okay, lovely. So if you've got to move it too hard, it's not hot enough yet. Fair enough. So where I was like, mm, that's not hot enough I'm going to take those. Yeah, you're good. Thank you. I'm good, but you can keep can an I? eye. Lovely. So this basically, where it's only had that tablespoon or so of oil in it, it's actually cooking the vegetable with the natural fluid that's in it, yeah, the natural yeah, yeah. moisture that's actually Lovely. in your veg. You're not diluting any of the nutrients. I'm going to give those two Thank to you. Thank you. I'll keep an eye over okay, here. You're not diluting any of it. It's there. That's now running around my pan. So that's good. I am not expecting a big hiss when I put this in. If I get one, fine, but I'm not expecting it. So just taking my chicken. Just gently line it in there. Okay, looking good. What you should see is a pop, which we haven't got, so I'm just going to take the temperature up just that little bit. Mm -hmm. You can see it just starting to happen And there. it should just pop just all the way around. You see it over this side. You can see the breadcrumbs just popping yep. in the oil. So Absolutely. the oil's got hot. It's starting to fry those breadcrumbs. It's going to encapsulate your chicken. But this is why we do it over medium heat. You don't want raw chicken. Okay. No. Nobody, 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 the morning after Valentine's Day <laughs> wants to wake up with a dicky tummy. No. All right. Got to be Got to make careful. sure that chicken is cooked. There are plenty of ways that we can crisp up the outside. So if you get it and you've gone into the oil, maybe there's a lot of oil in there. It's not hot enough. It's gone really soggy. Right. And you go, oh my goodness, I've ruined dinner. You haven't. Okay. You haven't. Either then take it out, put it under a grill. Leave it to cook through on the pan. Take it away. Do both sides in the pan. Bring it away and put it into the oven. 
You haven't ruined dinner if it goes soggy to start off with. Do not panic. Okay. All right. I've just turned this side down a bit because these veggies are all looking absolutely gorgeous. Excellent. So, yeah. so we've got it. Oh, that's better. We're steaming. We're popping around the outside. Okay. Don't be tempted to keep lifting it early. Okay. All right. It needs to sit. It's like a pancake. Which is also next week, folks. Yeah, pancake true. Day. Golly, it's like a pancake. If you take it off the heat and lift it, lift it, lift it, it, it don't work. Okay. So we just want to leave that. Just trust in yourself. Okay. Trust in that clock that you look at and go, right, that's got about another two minutes before I'm going to look okay. at it. Mm -hmm. It's not a problem. Okay. It'll start to smell nice in your kitchen. Our kitchen is smelling pretty good. Smelling pretty moment. gorgeous. You'll start to smell the parmesan coming through. You'll start to smell the frying and the breadcrumbs. The chicken's coming through. So we're using chicken. One of the most wasted foods in this country. Top 10. Mm, yeah. Bread crumbs. Bread. Most wasted food in this country. Absolutely. Top 10. You've got the potatoes in the top 10 most wasted food in Definitely, this country. Definitely, yeah. So you can see where we're pulling it all together. Brilliant. We want you guys to enjoy something at home. We've used the whole egg. We use the white in that lovely mousse. We're using the, the yolk to bread our chicken. Absolutely. It's all going well. good. So okay, I'll tell so you what. Yeah, when that chicken is cooked, we're not going to put it back in the tray with a raw chicken. No, nope, so it's going to go straight on a plate. Straight on a plate. Okay, now, fantastic. if you are cooking this for the family, because mm -hmm. obviously I'm cooking this one one fillet at a time. Yeah. If you are cooking it for the family, take it out onto a different baking tray, set your oven to about 75, 80 degrees. Just to keep it warm. Just pop it in there. It'll keep it crispy. It'll keep it warm. Nice. Sounds okay? good. Yeah, lovely. Whilst you get on with everything else. Now, I am going to have a look. Yeah. Well, you've got to at some point. I'm going to have a look, but I'm not going to show anybody else. Fair enough. Okay, I'll, I'll show everybody. That's Looking fine. good. Um, He's so ready. what you want to do, you want it to go golden, not black. Fab. So just up, using a pair of tongs or using another spatula. Nice. We're just going to tip it Ooh, over. Oh, looking good. So we've gone brown a little bit, but they're crispy. Fab. Golden colour. What I'm actually going to do, we're going to plate this one up so you guys can see it because you don't want to watch me cook another chicken breast. Fair enough, no worries. So I'm just going to get a plate in, Sian. He says, looking for the plate that he's mm. got out. We earlier. have got one here. Don't know where I put it. Definitely got one out earlier. That'll do. That'll do. Okay, so plate. Whilst that's cooking off. We're going to make this a little bit fancy, a little Lovely. ring. Lovely. Go for it. I'm going to drain that veg you for you. drain the so veg, that would be go. perfect. So a little ring. Now, I'm using a ring. The reason I'm using a ring is because I forgot to bring in my heart-shaped cutter this morning. Aww. But that will look just as gorgeous. So if you've got a heart-shaped cookie cutter, big heart-shaped cookie cutter, one end of your plate gets your potato into your heart-shaped cookie cutter that you then, just with a fork, crush down so it makes a flat top. And I know a heart would have been a little bit extra, but to be fair, that is very smart and pretty chefy and Sorry. very nicely presented. It's all about the presentation, Absolutely. especially when you're trying to get somebody's heart. Oh, or just keep it or just keep show it. them how much you love them. Absolutely. Okay, just so sharing. Let's just get the... Scruffy little bits out from the side. Fantastic. Through your fingers. Gorgeous. Go that. Okay, a couple of pieces then of our tender stem broccoli. Teflon fingers, you might want to use a set of tongs for this. Yes. Um, go for but it. Spot, spot the guy who's been in the kitchen far too long. But it's looking beautifully colourful. It's going to have a, a real wow factor on the plate. I'm trying to work as quick as I can. Uh -huh. Boiling, boiling. Yeah, it's warm. Definitely warm. And then we'll set of tongs. Lovely. I'm just going to take that veg, that ribbon of veg, into the middle. I like wow. so. Gorgeous. And hopefully, our other side is cooked. So we said, how are we going to tell? Nice. Little incision. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, little incision. Yeah. And literally, have a look. Prize it apart. If there's any pink, it's not cooked. 
There's no pink. It's all white. It's cooked. Lovely. You don't want the other half to know that you've had a look to make sure their chicken's cooked. So you go the other side up. But I'm going to go back that way because it looks beautiful. better. Beautiful. Let's turn this hob off. So. Wow. Move that one out of the way. I'm take those for you. A little clean of the plate where the oil came down. That one needs to go. Yeah, those can all come over here. So our plate is ready to go for main course. Clean it up. Away you go. If you want to make it that extra little bit special, a little knob of butter on top of your... You had some your, lovely um, fresh... Fresh thyme. Fresh thyme, a little sprig or sprinkle. We'll just curl knob that Knob of butter at the point of serving on there if you really want to go for it. Gorgeous. Okay. Yeah, really there lovely. we go with that. Moose. <gasps> wow. Moose. Okay. Let the moose noose about this hoose. Where Alrighty. is our moose? They our look moose amazing. has been in the fridge. Obviously, it's only been in there for 40 minutes-ish, which is fine because it's set. Bring in that. Wow. Our two blocks of chocolate. Just with a grater, block of chocolate. Lovely. Nice finishing touch. Over the top. And if you don't want to use all the chocolate, guess what? You've got uh, a bit left for you. I'm sh yeah, I can imagine most and people will go for that. And what we're also going to do is strawberries. Ah. Oh, strawberries. Really? Yeah, lovely. Now, you can do what you want with it. You could literally just slice down the middle and stick it on the side. Of course. You could fan it. You could... You could do anything with it. Yeah, though. nice. So all I'm going to do is just go through. Mm, thin slices up towards the stalk, but not through it. No, because I'm going to take the stalk out in a minute. Lovely. Potentially, unless... Oh, that looks pretty. It'll fan itself. Gorgeous. Like so. Lovely. And if we wanted to serve, maybe, so with this a biscuit... Is... One of those moments, strawberries are gorgeous, but you could go with raspberries, any fruit that you might have. Anything. Cute more. little biscuit. Little biscuit. What else have we got? We've got truffles. Oh, nice. What else do you want on Valentine's wow, Day? Wow, like a little pud. That looks oh, good. Oh, and look, the roses oh, have arrived. Hey, Let me get that one out of the way. Let's put that there. So we've got a fantastic. Oh, that looks so pretty. There we go. Folks. <laughs> We've Gorgeous. just done parmesan crusted chicken, chocolate mousse, Amazing. from scratch, start to finish, 50 minutes. You don't want to be slaving on Valentine's Day. No. But you want it to be special. Absolutely. Chocolate mousse, any biscuit you can find. If you do want to make those twill biscuits, you crack on. If not, any biscuit you can find. A couple of little chocolate truffles, strawberry or any fruit you want on the top. Your parmesan crusted chicken, crushed new potatoes. Gorgeous. Pan fried veg. Great for Valentine's Day, but good for love any day. Any day of the week. Any day. Guys, have a fantastic week. We can't wait to see you again soon. Thank you for joining Keep your us. eyes peeled on our YouTube channel. Subscribe to it, then you keep up to date all the time. Send us any photos that you've got. We'd love to see what you've created. But for now, it's goodbye from me. And me. Bye. And we'll Thank see you, you soon. Thank you so much, guys. Take care. Amazing.